Hello, welcome back. Last time I did the big one and it was super cool. I had a great time here. Power usage was pretty good. Somebody's done a little better. Uh, lots of different ways to do it with different production costs, etc. It was great. All right, so an invitation. What's this about? Oh, hey, it's Sun himself. Dear engineer, how would you like a chance to work with world-class peers on the top problems facing humanity today, unfettered by provincial governments or corporate hierarchies? Introducing my latest project, Avalon City, a new idea for organizing human life that combines citizenship and employment into a single concept. Ugh, I don't like that. <laughs> Avalon City is the city-state and transnational corporation rolled into one. I don't like that. Ugh. Physically, it takes the form of an advanced autonomous networked city built on an artificial platform in international waters. Of course it does. The citizen employees of Avalon City are scientists and engineers at the top of their fields, recruited from around the globe. It is here that we will work on problems like reversing climate change, developing true clean energy, and solving disease and aging. You may find my ideas fanciful, but consider the fact that 50 years ago Shenzhen was nothing but a marshy backwater. In less than one lifetime, the area underwent a complete transformation into one of the world's largest megacities and a global capital of commerce and technology. It's a demonstration of just how much human ingenuity can accomplish when a large number of people work toward one common goal. Uh, as, as, work as one toward a common goal. Avalon City will continue that legacy. As a token of thanks for your efforts on the Avalon project, okay, that's what I was working on, and as a recognition of the brilliant engineering you have done to make it possible, I am pleased to offer you a citizenship employment in Avalon City. Please bear in mind that this is an invitation extended only to a select few. Your certificate is enclosed. Sun Hatian, President, Avalon City. So this is like, <laughs> if it's not already, future super dystopia. Yikes. What's Carl going to have to say about that? You got one of these invites too, eh? Avalon City? Can't say it's for me. We've both seen what he's building. Surveillance, tracking, it all looks like a bit of a police state to me. I'm sure it's great if you trust him and he trusts you, but I'm too old to know the ways that... Uh, I'm, I'm too old to not know the ways that can go wrong. I'd rather take my chances here in the regular world, even if it is all going to pot. If you decide to go yourself, though, cheers. Let me know how the cheese is there. Carl. Permanently relocate to Avalon City. You will not lose access to any puzzles, but there will be no going back. Okay, so I think how I'm going to understand this is... So this is a plot point. My character relocates to there. I won't lose access to any puzzles. So I can basically go to the past and say, and actually like have done this and this. I'll do those at some point. Uh, what it will do is change my title screen here. Maybe the solitaire game would go away. Maybe not. Well, no, that's that counts as a puzzle, right? I won't lose access to it. All right. Well, I mean, that's obviously the way the game continues, and I'm not ready to take a detour for these yet. I have some ideas for what to put in both of these places, but I, it doesn't feel like the time. <laughs> Eventually I will. It just doesn't feel like a time. So I'm going to accept this invitation. There's no going back. So what did I accomplish in Shenzhen? Engineering stories aren't like movie stories. I didn't find love or save the world or anything like that. You had some fun building some electronics, but it brought me here. To the start of something new. Maybe something good, or maybe a disaster. But no matter what the future holds, there's one thing I know, one thing I can always count on. I'm a damn good engineer. Shenzhen I.O. A game by Zactronics. Oh, this is a credit sequence. Okay, I see. So one thing I noticed um, in the last several puzzles that, was that Jia was conspicuously absent. Like, where did my boss go? Um, 
So yeah, credits. Cool. I'm not anywhere near done with this game, I'm sure. Uh, got lots to go. Even if there were no more puzzles, uh, I would have plenty yet. There are several I want to come back to and optimize further. I think I'm going to actually do that this time. I said I might with TIS 100 and I never did. That might still happen someday. I said I might with Opus Magnum and I never did. That one I think is less likely. But in this one, it's going to happen for sure. Okay, well this is awkward. <laughs> I hope this sequence isn't too long. Uh, I mean, I don't mind looking at credits sequences, but this just doesn't feel like the right time. <laughs> Alright, that feels like the end of it. Small team, but yeah, that's Zactronics. Okay, new concept OS. Live camera feed, something something. Weather is sunny. Air quality is good. Whoa, first time I've ever seen that. Temperature is that. Drone activity is heavy. That, that's normal. Sector 203. Okay, that's what my uh, ID badge says. I made the thing for this. So in concept mail... Long Tongue Co. LTD, Avalon City. Got it. Okay, what, what, what the ding? The ding went there. Objective complete. Okay. Got it. So yeah, there's just there's a Long Tongue tab, and there's an Avalon City tab. Neat. Getting started. Dear Engineer, <laughs> I don't have a name. I am pleased to welcome you to the independent principality of Avalon City. Now that you are situated here, you are doubtless wondering how to begin contributing to our efforts. It may take you some getting used to, but employee citizens of Avalon City are expected to organize themselves into project-based teams as needs arise. There are no pointless hierarchies or org charts here. Achieving the goals of our high-level development plans is the only thing that matters. A key goal as we finish initial construction is to achieve complete self-sufficiency. The less we depend on import, the less leverage other nations have with us, which will reduce the friction involved in gaining full diplomatic recognition. Research and development is already underway in key disciplines to support this objective, including marine science and biology, electronics and software, manufacturing, uh, and manufacturing and construction. The people involved in these efforts will begin reaching out to you soon. San Hotean, President, Avalon City. Alright, Derek Paul. Lisa Sumura. New people. Hiya, it was great to meet you at New Citizen Orientation. As I was explaining, the Ocean's Bounty Program is an initiative to meet all of Avalon City's sustenance needs using nothing but the sea around us. And we could really use your help. Hope that people here like seafood. I don't. It turns out that feeding a city is as much about logistics as it is as... It turns out that feeding a city is as much about logistics as much as it is biology. Sorry, Lisa. We have literal tons of ingredients and other materials to move back and forth between the cold storage area and the labs. So I've been planning out a robot that can handle that sort of thing. I've got the mechanical aspects down, but the control system is where you would come in. Once it's finished, there are probably applications all over the city, so this is a project with pretty big impact. Great to have you on board, Derek. Welcome to the team. I have to run, but it sounds like you've begun coordinating with Derek already. Thanks for your help. Lisa Sumura, PhD, FRSB. Director Ocean's Bounty Program, Avalon City. All right. Cold storage robot. Uh, right, okay. All right, familiar stuff. Radio RX is a non-blocking XBus input connected to a radio receiver. Motor is a simple output connected to a bi-directional motor. Extend and grab are simple outputs connected to a robotic arm. When a data packet that begins at the value 1 is received by the radio, pick up the container on the loading pad and move it to the first available storage bay. Then return the robotic arm to the loading pad. The second value in the data packet is the container's ID number and it will be used to retrieve it. What? When a data packet that begins with a value 2 is received by the radio, retrieve the container with the same ID number as the second value in the data packet and move the container to the loading pad. Consult the verification tab for information about motor extended grab timing. What? Hold on, is this the, uh... Is this the Sushi Robo thing? New music, by the way. No. That's a different robot. I'm not doing this yet. Okay, so not that. I feel like I'm missing a lot of information, like... How do I know what's the first available storage bay? Are they just all empty when this boots up and then shuts down and resets and uh, to, to free up more 
space. I guess that's what I'll assume. Because, yeah, I know nothing about containers leaving. RayRx is non blocking explosive, but getting to RayRx here. Motor. Okay, so just at 50 when doing nothing, at 100 when. Okay, so hang on. So you get a packet starting with one. Pick up the container on the loading pad. Extend, grab. Okay. So that one I extend, then the next tick I grab. Why do you hold it for this long before dropping it? Okay, so you need a tick of extend. You need a tick of grab. You need to keep holding the grab while motoring. Then you extend again while holding grab. Then you release both at once. Then you motor back to your standard position. So then a two comes in with 468. Retrieve the container with the same ID as the second value in the data packet and move the container to the loading pad. Okay, so this is the loading pad. These are my... Ah, these are my, uh... My slots. And they all start empty. When I move a container into one, it becomes full with that ID. When I... Uh... When I get a two command, I pick up the container and move it back to the loading pad, getting rid of it and freeing up that slot. Okay, so basically I'll have one of these with ID numbers at each index, pretty much. I guess that's reasonable, sure. Uh, they'll all start at zero, that's fine. Motor extend and grab timing. Okay, so this robotic arm starts here. So it extends, grabs. I guess it like grabs and retracts in the same tick because I'm taking extend set to zero to mean retracted. So it's like retracting as it grabs. I guess that's fine. It's very confident that it'll get the thing as it retracts itself. Uh, but that has to, there has to be a tick of that. All right, so operations here. There's the motor control. So, okay. So, crate ID 468 comes in to loading. You extend, grab, retract, motor over to here, extend, ungrab, motor back to the loading zone. You get a 2, so you're retrieving 468, it's in this bay. So you motor first, then you extend, grab, while grabbing, motor over this way. So then you extend, release both at once, and you're already at position zero here, so you don't have to motor anymore. So that request is done there. So then 304 comes in, grab it and place it here. 591 comes in, grab it and motor for two ticks here while still holding grab, and plop it there. Then motor back for two ticks. Okay, I understand what I'm doing. Uh, right, so... I have basically bookkeeping on what crate is where, and then arm control that needs to interact with that bookkeeping in some ways. Alright, so let's start with one of these. Talking to you. I don't need to transfer ever. TX is unused. Therefore, it'd be nice if I could, like, not have that... Uh, okay. 
involved in stuff. Okay, here, let's do it this way. I don't think I'll need simple pins. Well, you will. Uh, these two are dx 300 able if I wanted. This one is not. So I think that actually makes sense. I'm going to start with just one controller here. Um, it's extremely unlikely to stay that way. I don't like this layout. But I guess I'll deal with it. It's fine. Here, your data and your address. Uh, okay, so tech. Uh, no, um. Move X1, X, uh, tech, X1. I don't love that uh, structure, but that's how I'm going to start. Uh, Alright, so to break this down to operations. Alright, so read the command. That's done there. When the command is read, when I'm loading... Uh, I'm going to reverse these. So load means to move something from here to... Well, I mean, it, it could be either way. Um, let's do it this way. Receive and send. I think that's a little clearer. All right, we're doing some socket programming here. Uh, when receiving, um, how will I do motor control? That's, that feels very much like a function call, essentially. So another controller, I'm just going to plunk you here right now, just like that. You're in charge of motor control. I'll communicate to you like this for now. Uh, and you will also, here, I'll communicate like this. Just so these can be free for that. I don't know that I need to talk to that yet. I probably do. I might need an intermediate for bookkeeping control. However, I might not. Okay, so I'll send commands to this. Let me write this as if I'm... Yeah, okay, so let, let's write the motor control and see what that, that's going to look like. What will you receive? I could if I wanted to have... Okay, so what's the difference between send and receive? On send, you do the motor input first, then grab while returning. On receive, you grab motor, reset the. Yeah, they're those are very different tasks. Actually, what I might want. Yeah, okay, I think what I might end up wanting. Is one control one controller for the extended grab and a separate one for the motor because those are sort of independent actions so a very simple function call here would be 
do the arm action with this duration. So this is with duration one, duration one, duration one, because yeah, it's always a 100 on the extend, then it goes to zero for the duration of the grab. Well, this is essentially grab duration three, I guess. I can't quite use gen because you're controlling two things at once. But yeah, okay, so let me just write that um, just for my own uh, organizational comfort. I think this will make the most sense. So you'll receive a message. You're not ever going to talk to that um, through some sort of Xbus pin, which will be uh, just to get you a little more out of the way. Uh, when you get a message, you move. Okay, so extend is P2 and... So you start with an extend, so move 100, X1. Sleep 1, that's always what you do. Move 010, X1, so just the grab. Sleep X0. I might need to not block on that for a full tick? I probably will. That's that's fine. Sleep ack. Move 110x1. So that's for this part of that. Sleep 1. Move 000x1. Well, that just barely fits, so I have no room for anything else to happen there. Like, for example, all right, so what's communicated to this is the number of ticks that grab is held while extend is not. So the, the width of this particular slice. So it'd be two for a one move. It'd be three for a two move. Okay, and I can just fire that message and forget about it and time everything else around what I told that to do. So motor control is going to be separate. So why do I have it connected there? I don't need it. Uh, okay, well, so you would fit into a... Uh, since it costs me nothing to do this, I'm going to do it. Oh, also, check it out. Okay, so really compact this nice. Does that compact nicer? It depends. I don't know. So even if this doesn't end up being efficient, it just helps me organize my thoughts. So being able to think about this as a fire and forget thing while I uh, decide what to do with the rest of it will help me a lot. Okay, so on receive. All right, and I think I probably want a translator between bookkeeping and... Yeah, okay, so a controller that talks to this and can do two things. It either gives me number to feed to arm control two three is it two three four five or six uh, for first empty spot or for a specific ID okay um, I'm just gonna plunk one of these down right now so I don't run out of instruction space uh, Okay, so you would receive, let's say it's x0. Um, you also might be the thing that does the actual writing to this thing, but I'm not sure yet. I 
I'm going to say negative one means return first empty slot. Okay, you will, of course, need to do I. Let's make this, um, let's see if that were x zero. I mean, it's a lot more convenient if it's like x three, x two. Let's say it's x two. I can change it later if I have to. Uh, yeah, I don't like this layout, but again, I can change it later if I have to. Tag x two, negative one. Okay, so if it is negative one, uh, okay, so here are the instructions for. finding a specific ID. Let's write that first, actually, since I'm here. I don't have to do that. I might need to do this, though. All right, so start at the beginning. test if that equals... Okay, yeah, you're not using ack, you just moved... Um, here, let me make that dat. I don't need to operate on the number that came in. SLX x2, move x2 dat, tech dat, negative one. Uh, empty tech, uh, it's not d1, it's x0. Tech x zero dat. What if I hit zero? Or if I if I run out of space? I'm probably gonna infinite loop. So yeah, I hope your input is perfect and you never asked for a number that doesn't exist, because the entire system is gonna break if you do that. But I mean, that is a corner that I'm okay cutting here. Actually, I guess this is just minus jump loop. Yeah, so assuming perfect input data, and this is never asked for a crate it doesn't have, then that's fine. When I get that, I move uh, x1, the address, to ack probably and add one and then move that to uh, x2. I probably don't do that part. I probably just do this to save you some lines. If I need to operate on, yeah, so this just gives index plus one of create in storage. I don't even have to say it's plus one. It's, let's say this is index zero. So this is one, two, three, four, five. Uh, but index one here will be stored in slot zero. At least that's the idea. Okay, and then to get first empty. Okay, uh, you do wanna do this whenever that's happening. Start at the beginning. So empty means uh, tech d1 uh, actually this is this can be lookup tech d1, uh, d1, right, I keep writing that, tech x0, uh, ack, no, dat, right, because I put dat in there. I'm not using the ack register here at all. And also, this is not what I'm trying to do. When you get a negative one, there is no second operand, tech x0, zero, zero. minus jump empty 
move x1, x2. Okay, so that's my lookup. So I either send you negative one. Well, yeah, there is only one operand ever. Okay, so I send you an operand either of negative one, which means, give me first empty. Uh, when that happens, I read a value and check if it's zero. If it's not, I keep doing that forever until I find a zero. I will also assume this will never be asked to store a crate when it's full. Uh, I mean, this doesn't specify any error handling, so I'm just going to let the system consume all the power and melt down if that happens. <laughs> halt and catch fire. Uh, so once it is, then I read the address, which again is one past where the empty spot is, so I'm just one indexing everything from here. So yeah, loading zone is uh, index zero. And return it out the x2 line. This looks very reasonable to me. Okay, so again, if it's not negative one, then I check this for the ID I'm looking for. Yeah, so I'm either looking for a specific ID or for a zero. Ooh, okay. So then just ask this for a zero and I can fit it into a smaller controller. There we go, that makes more sense. And I'm only using one register, so that definitely can happen. Okay, um, so to fix that, this is not a thing anymore. Tech x0, ack, because dat doesn't exist. There's no jump weight, there's no empty. Okay, so that makes more sense, doesn't it? I feel like it does. Okay, so I either send this a zero, which means that's what I'm looking for, or I send it, uh, yeah, I just send it whatever I'm looking for, sure. That became nice and simple. So receive means, um, There's a crate there and needs to go here. I will move. Hmm. This is the most common case, so I want it to happen first. So negative 999 goes to wait. Hold on, I can TCP this. Which means that I don't have to store it. Okay. Uh, TCP x11. Minus jump wait plus jump send otherwise you're just here in receive so that's just receive I'll leave the label there just so you know okay so when that happens the next number is an ID to be stored Okay, so when receiving, I move zero to, uh, I guess, x3. This is some real messy wiring. I'll clean it up if I need to free up some space. So when I've done that, uh, move x3, ack. I'm gonna actually sub one. Yeah, there's no way I'll get away with this. I'll just let this do the bookkeeping. When you return me, since you have a bunch of spare instructions. Can I do that? No, you don't have that many spare instructions.
So when you look up, uh, okay, yeah, I'd have to, I might have to extend you because I don't have the address space for that here. Yeah, so somebody has to write values to this. It makes some sense that it would be you. Let me see how the line count shakes out here. Let's, okay, let me write this as if you are doing the bookkeeping and I'm gonna leave this written as if you are doing the bookkeeping. So nobody's actually doing it, but let's pretend that that value gets written here somewhere. I'll see who has more extra space at the end of this. I'm guessing it's gonna be you. I, I'm guessing I will fill this up all the way. I'll want to extend this to uh, 6,000 because it's gonna take a bunch of instructions to do that. I would, uh, let's see, I'd move x1 to ack, I'd move that to x2, then I'd sub one, then I'd move it back to x1, then I would check whether I was looking for a zero or not. If I was, then I need to read the ID that's coming in and then write it to this. So that's one more instruction for you to pass that on. Otherwise, I need to just zero that out. Yeah, I don't know. I think I'm pretty convinced in that. That's that's just what I want to do. Uh, sure, you can't P0. You can't... It's just the X3. Uh, or X2. Sure, X2 is fine. Sure. Uh, yeah, let me just do that now. It just makes more sense that way. Um, so I still want to return the same index here. Do I, though? I can return whatever I want. If you don't need to interact with this... Oh, geez, that's connected to that? Okay, because I didn't look behind to see what was connected to what. If you don't need to interact with that... Well, I'm prettying up, prettying up my layout at a, probably a bad time here, but this is when I'm doing it. That looks much better. Uh, if you don't need to interact with this, which I think is true... Move 0x3, then move uh, x1, x3. Send is just move x1, x3, and then do some other stuff. Uh, right after that, you need to jump weight, but, you know, I'm not done writing that yet. Uh... So yeah, if I'm operating on that, I might as well add one before giving it back to you. So it'll be the perfect output for this to receive. So you get index plus two, basically. Then I sub two, move ack to x1. So I set the address to that and uh, tech ack zero. Do I send a zero? Yes, I send a zero. Right, if I'm searching for zero, then I want to move. Another thing that will have been written to x2 into x0. Otherwise, I move the value of ack there. Okay. Uh, you ended up with one extra instruction. I'm sure I'll find something to do with that. That seems likely. But otherwise, this just fit nicely. Okay. So you do all the bookkeeping. So when I receive, I tell you to find a zero. And then I also tell you the ID of what has been received. Oh, I need to do this the other way around. That's fine. Because I got to clear that IO line before sending you the next thing. Yes, that's true. Uh, so yeah, ID gets written to that index that you just looked up, so you know what the index is. I don't need to tell you again. Uh, move X1, X3. Yes, okay. Um, move X3, ACK. Actually, I can move X3. Okay, so when I'm receiving... Yes, when I'm receiving, I can immediately move X3 to X2. I don't need to hang on to that value. So incoming here goes there and tells this to do that stuff because the value is already suited for input to this. Then I do bookkeeping. 
Then motor needs to happen. Nobody is connected to motor right now, so that's a big question mark right now. It's not you, probably. So somebody needs to sleep too. And output, oh, by the way, I need to initialize. Well, whoever's controlling the motor initializes it to 50, yes. Hmm. Oh, and also it needs to return once it's done. Yeah, so I don't have the instructions to do the motor control here, I'm fairly certain. Because to just do it for the receive, let's see what it would look like to just do it for receive. Okay, I would need to hang on to this, wouldn't I? Because uh, then I would need to move. Let's see, you would need to sleep to move. Uh, 100 to P1, which is not connected to anything. Then you would sleep, uh, you'd sub 1 and sleep for ACK ticks. Then you would move 50 to P1, and yeah, okay, so somebody else needs to be in charge of motor control. Sounds fine. You do have another X line that can come out of here. All right, so this is going to go to the motor controller. Somebody over here. This should be able to be simple, I think. Because all this needs to know is direction and ticks to sleep, right? Uh, hmm. Well, I'm not communicating direction right here. What's the difference between telling this what to do and... Well, okay, so this will know how to reverse its movement. No, no, yeah, that's that's the difference. This will know how to reverse it. It'll know how to hold it at 50. It can also know how to sleep too when it's given the initial command. Yeah, okay, so this will know all about the timing and everything. I'll need no sleeps here. X3, ack, move ack, X2. I wish I could do those in one instruction, but I can't. When you receive a message, actually kind of complicated. I could be close to done here. I could be way far away from being done. I still have the whole debugging step to do. I'm sure there are bugs in here, but like I don't have the I don't have everything written out yet. Okay, so I tell you to search for zero. I read your result. I send it to two places. And that second place also needs to get a direction value. Oh boy. Then I send this the ID for bookkeeping, and then I'm done. But see, that doesn't leave me nearly enough instructions for the send. Okay, so what would the send have to look like? I'll extend it on this note if I have to. 
So I just tell you the ID to look up. When you've looked it up, you return me the index and then... Uh... Wait. Okay, well this is just silly. It's a lot clearer if I put a literal zero there. Uh, right, so you'll look up the index, return that to me, and then write zero to the slot that you just returned. Um, from that index, don't I still need to do all of this? I think I need another controller just <laughs> All right. Well, that's fine. I need a motor controller controller. Or maybe you. Yeah, now why don't I just communicate this to you? You're receiving the data that this is receiving. You can repeat it to there. Maybe. That seems not unreasonable yet. So what if I just make this as simple as move... You still need... Mm. So now, hang on. So if I'm writing this for... So for receive, you start this immediately, then two ticks later you do the motor thing. For send, you do the motor immediately. Then you do the grabbing action, and in the middle of this, you do the... You reverse the motor. Oh boy, this is hard to think about. Uh... So the commonalities of these two operations of receive and send are are many. Ah, okay, so let's do this. When I receive, let's just put the differences between receive and send in here and the common instructions afterward. Because, like, all of this... Uh, com equals common. Uh, so receive is move 0, x3. Send is move x1, x3. Are those the only differences? Not exactly. So dat is going to be motor control direction. So the first direction the motor go... Well, no, it always goes 100 first. It's just the... It's an ordering thing. Okay. Well, okay, sure. That's... All right, let's do this. Since 100 and 0 don't really have exact meanings there, what I'm going to do is move x1 dat tcp dat 1. So you'll have a 1 or a 2. So that can be communicated onto this. Okay, so this might make sense. Let's walk through it and see if I'm thinking about it as clearly as I think I am. So read incoming value. It's most commonly going to be negative 999. And the shortest route is to jump back to wait, which is to sleep one there at the end, yeah? Uh, if it is a 2, then I'm going to go to send. If it is uh, a 1, 
Whatever it is, it's written to that, so it's one or two. So receive means move zero to x3. I tell you what to look up and jump to come. Send means move x1 to x3. Ah, uh, here's the problem. This is part of receive. Okay, so I need that to be able to happen before data comes back from here. You don't use your dat register. So I do need to squirrel it away for that. I don't really like this. Hold up. So I need to write both both operands to this before it returns my value. And I have it the other way around right now. So move x to ack. Zero x one. So sure, you can look for the match. Yeah, once you've found the match here, I'm doing no more conditionals there, so I can actually just do this right here. Tech ack zero plus move x2 dat, and then this is move dat. Okay, so I got this weird split conditional here, but this is kind of a feature of this language. The way that conditionals work. It's important that this instruction happens first before the rest of the conditional, because I have, I have all these operations, and because of this instruction, I need to send something on x2 after I've already read that value. Okay, so I think I made that make sense, great. So that lets these share the common code there. So you yeah, on receive, I move two numbers. On send, I move one number. Okay, I think that works. So then in common, I take the return value and put it in my ACK register. I send it out to, uh, to x2. I send it out to x0. And I send to x0 the instruction. I probably want to do that in the other order. Nah. Nah, I want it this way. Uh, and then I sleep. Okay, that doesn't sound so unreasonable. Now... The problem... is that... Okay, I think I know how to fix this. Uh, so after I send the, the... Yeah, don't do x2 first. Do x0 first. Do all of this x0. You're going to sleep for what x0 sends you. Yeah. So defer to x0, the motor control for how long you want to wait before kicking off this process. Yeah, so all you gotta do is send back a number equal to two if you receive a one and zero if you receive a two. No, zero if you receive a one, because it's a delay for this bottom part, not the motor part. So zero if you receive a one, and number of times you need to move the motor if you receive a two. All right, so this logic is gonna get complicated. I'm gonna go ahead and just do this right now. I think this does all still make sense because it's always going to be a delay on this between zero and however long the motor takes to get there ticks. And that's independent of what this is doing with the motor. Now, so what do I know about motor delay? 
If it's a 1, motor delays by exactly 2. If it's a 2, motor delays by 0. Oh, uh, and then waits. 2 after that. If it's a 2, motor delays by 0. And then 2 in between. Yeah, so it's just a delay of that much either way. It's always 2 in there. Okay, I think this works. Maybe. Okay, so what do you have to do? Start by enabling that to zero. That's the XX zero. Move X zero, let's make that that. Uh, what you receive is, uh, that's gonna have to be ACK. Okay, so what you receive first is going to be what will be output to this. So it's... D delay on this plus one. So I can sub one from that to get the amount of time the motor is on. Okay? These are all full instructions, so that's where the sub one goes. All right, sure. Uh, then I get either a one or a two. So I'm gonna tech x zero one. If it's a one, I send back exactly two. Otherwise I send back exactly zero, right? I think that's what happens. This sub one doesn't have to happen yet. All right, yeah, so I tell you how long to wait for the motor. Oh, wait. Uh, let's see, okay, so when receiving, you always do it immediately. One is store. Two is retrieve, right? Okay, so... No, wait. Yeah, okay, so I have these backward for one thing. No, I don't. No, no, for... Okay, so you always wait... No, it's, it's the delay on this. It's the delay on this, not on this. I keep mixing this up. I keep looking at this delay and thinking it's for that. Yeah, I probably have a lot of mix-ups like that in here. Uh, okay, so if I've received a one, then I want to move zero. Yeah, if I'm receiving a package, then wait no a length of time for the arm motion. In the other case, it's a little more complicated. The amount of time you want to wait is equal to the... Yeah, is equal to how long I want to move the motor before getting there. Or, uh, yes, how long I want to move the motor. So I do do the sub 1 immediately. And I move ACK to X0, right? Okay, so this retrieve, yeah, you wait 1 before doing that. In this retrieve, you wait 1, but if it were farther out, you would wait 2. Yeah, okay, that makes total sense. Okay, and in addition to that, if I have sent that, I want to sleep two. Otherwise, I want to sleep zero. Okay, great. So that works fine. So you sleep two before doing the motor thing. This is so weird on all the timing stuff. So then we're going to move 100 to P1. Sleep ack. Sleep 2, move 0, P1, sleep ACK. I might have to do this. I think I don't. Well, no, but that, that does literally always happen. So yes, of course I do that. Okay, so move... Uh, Move zero, P1, sleep, ack. 
Is that it? Because, yeah, then you move 50 and you go back to sleep. Oh, I think that might just work. Okay, so let's see how close I am to a working solution. It doesn't seem impossible that I have everything in place. All right, so negative 999, no one does anything. Great, so we wait. 468 is there. I receive a 1. Got it in that. I wonder if I've mixed up registers ever here. Probably. Uh, these instructions fit nicely, so yeah, there was no room to make this a smaller controller. Okay, right, so it is 1, so it skips both of those. Uh, move 0 to x3. All right, so I want to look up my first 0. That goes in there. All right, so move x1 to x3. Right, I'm going to write the ID that I that will need to go in there. Move 0, x1. x1 is the address. Mm -hmm. Okay, so reset that to the beginning. Technically not necessary the first time. Uh, therefore... I don't really save anything by putting it at the bottom here, so I'm not going to. If it's going to happen at the top or bottom, either way, it doesn't really matter. I'm. It just feels better, though, to do it that way. So that's what's going to happen. Okay. So looking up a zero. Tech X zero ack. Okay, so it was a match. The very first one is tech ack zero. I am putting in a zero. So activate that conditional. Read this value into dat. x1, the address, goes to ack, and I add 1. You're doing a bunch of stuff. Yeah, because, okay, sure, so you, you wrote that value. You're already ready to go to com and try to read a value. Okay, so you're adding 1. Uh, I write it to you. You don't have to wait long. Great, so you get a 2. That's the the width of this uh, this shape. You sub 2... Stick it back in the address and write something there. Okay, so while that's happening, that goes out to x0. So 2 goes out there. You're moving that there. State is right. You woke up. Got a lot of stuff going on at once. Um, I want to make sure all of these are doing their job correctly. x0 ack. Okay, so you read that 2, put it in that register. You did it. Dat is going out there. Dat is 468. That's definitely going to write to the correct position. Okay, so move dat x0. So x0 also gets an additional value. You sub 1. Tech what's coming in on x0. It's 1. Okay, and yes, I did write the 468. And I move 0 to x1. So this will reset the address to there. Uh, x0 was indeed 1, so I'm moving 0 to x0, so you don't sleep at all before you start this entire shape. Sleep for x0 ticks, which is 0. Uh, okay, you reset your pointer, you slept for 0 ticks. You're done with that. Uh, ack goes to x2. Okay, so you immediately tell this to kick off its process. Meanwhile, this is sleeping for two ticks before the motor starts up. Looks good. Okay, so what's what about this? So you wake up. You receive two. So again, that's the width of that. You tell this, 100, so extend is true, grab is false. And then you sleep. Extend it! Great! Then you tell it to stop extending and grab. Meanwhile... You're back doing your job. You could sleep for a bit longer, technically. I could at least sleep ack. <laughs> I mean, it'd be a little more efficient, I guess. I'd like to sleep a lot more than ack.
Could this tell you how long to sleep again? It does have a spare... Ah, uh, you would need more than one extra line there. So I'll just let this be inefficient. It's just negative 999 coming in. Yeah, so making this sleep until all these processes have completed would help my power efficiency some. It's just like three instructions, I guess four instructions per per cycle when nothing is ever going to go on. Eh, that could save some power usage, but not a huge amount. Uh, okay, so this is telling it to grab and stop extending. That goes out there. You're just going to get the negative 9 at 9 and go to wait. Okay, so that was written to there. Now you're going to sleep for Actix. Two. Looks good. Uh, okay, right. Uh, everybody has to sleep. You're going to sleep. Okay, you grab the crates. Uh, you still have a job to do, and so do you. You have slept for two at this point. So motor goes to 100, and you sleep for one tick. Meanwhile, you're still sleeping for that long. Okay, you have to get to your sleep. Looks good. Now you're sleeping for two. Oh, something's missing. Something's missing. Something's missing. There we go. Yeah, I forgot to put it back to the neutral value. All right, so motor stops moving. You now tell it to extend and grab at the same time and sleep so that it actually does it. Okay, great. Then you release everything and go back to sleeping for that. Meanwhile, motor control is still sleeping for one more tick. And then it tells it to go to zero and sleep for the that interval. Okay, so that part looks real good. Now let's retrieve that same crate. Okay, so here's a two. Uh, yeah, I should have called these like, uh, receive and retrieve, that sounds too similar. Send is fine. Okay, so move X1, this value of 468 that hasn't come to me yet. That goes out to here. Okay, you got it, you woke up, you put it in your ACK register. That has something stale in it, but that's fine, don't worry about it. Then you need to read this value. It'll take a little bit. Tech ACK 0 ACK, that was true. Uh, tech ACK 0, that's false. Great. So X1 is the address. I add 1 to it, and I move that to X2. Okay, then I sub two, getting it back to zero, put that to that, and move zero into that. I'm just gonna trust that that part works. It looks like it will. Uh, move ACK to X zero, all right. So you get a two. Move that to X zero. All right, so here's where you deviate. You get a two instead of a one here. Since you got a two, you didn't sleep, you're going to send that one. Yes, one. That's correct. That's how long you sleep before telling this to happen. Okay, great. So that one goes here. You're going to sleep for that length of time. Motor goes immediately, and I sleep for that length of time. Yes, this looks perfect. Motor goes to neutral, uh, arm starts the action. Uh, arm does its thing, we've already seen that happen. You're done, you're just doing your normal procedure. This is sleeping. It's gonna sleep for a bit longer as the arm does its action. Arm action finished. Motor going back action can happen now. Arm action does the other part of itself. You go back to 50, and everything's pretty cool. It's great. Okay, well hey, that worked first try? Pretty much. 
Cost's a little bit elevated. Lines of code's a little bit elevated, kinda. Power usage is very average. Ah, <clears throat> uh, this is great. So satisfying to finally have the components we need for our food development projects ready uh, when we need them, and without having to go in the freezer all the time. You're the best. Indeed, this is just what we needed to make forward progress. I think we're getting close to the synthesized grains, too. My dream of creating a full seven-course French dinner made from nothing but materials de de derived from kelp is within sight. That's going to be interesting, all right. Okay, so... Here's the thing. I kind of really want to do the thing where I... Where this sleep is parameterized better. I don't think I can, though. Nobody is going to be able to provide me this data at exactly the time that I need it, are they? Like, how do I even calculate that? Well, it's this, the width of this shape, plus... One, two... Width of that shape, plus two, plus that width minus one. Uh, that's a bunch of math to do. I guess it's a reasonably obvious power usage uh, savings to add one more microcontroller here that controls just that value, how long you sleep after that. Uh, but like, you have to do wiring for that, I don't know, that's that's too much of a pain. You can just sleep one and be reading the negative 999s. Again, yeah, this machine very much relies on having perfect data incoming. If you're ever asked for a crate that doesn't exist, or asked to store a crate when your storage is full, or asked too soon after a pending request to do another action, then everything is going to just completely break down. But as long as the input data is perfect, which it is in this case, then none of that will happen. <laughs> Alright, well I'm in a new world. New job, new company. I can still go back in time to my old one. And finish the stuff that I didn't finish, and improve the stuff that I didn't improve. But for now I'm going to be happy to be in Avalon City. Cool stuff. Alright, I'll see you next time for whatever this is.